The title of this lecture is Intrapartum Fetal Monitoring. The learning objectives for this presentation are number one, to understand the three-tier classification of electronic fetal heart rate monitoring, number two, to review the effects of electronic fetal heart rate monitoring on clinical decision making and outcomes, number three, Learn potential management strategies for suspicious and pathological fetal heart rate tracings. The cardiotocogram consists of both the tocogram, which monitors maternal contractions, and the cardiogram, which measures fetal heart rate. The fetal heart rate is determined as a balance of the parasympathetic and sympathetic tones. EFM can be used to determine fetal oxygenation. Please remember the classification of fetal heart rate tracing is dynamic. The classification can change depending on the clinical scenario and management. The tocogram assesses the contraction's frequency, duration, intensity, and relaxation time. Normal uterine contractions are 5 or less in 10 minutes averaged over a 30-minute window, lasting 30 to 60 seconds each time. Tachysystole refers to more than 5 contractions in a 10-minute window averaged over 30 minutes. When there is tachysystole, you must indicate the presence or absence of fetal heart rate decelerations. CTG trace is categorized as normal, suspicious, and pathological. For normal, which is no amber or red features, continue CTG and usual care, unless it was started because of concerns arising from intermittent auscultation, and there are no ongoing antenatal or intrapartum risk factors. Continue to perform a full risk assessment at least hourly and document the findings. For the suspicious category, which is one amber feature, perform a full risk assessment, including a full set of maternal observations, taking into account the whole clinical picture, and document the findings. Note that if accelerations are present, then fetal acidosis is unlikely. If the CTG trace was previously normal, consider possible underlying reasons for the change. Undertake conservative measures as indicated. If there are additional intrapartum risk factors such as slow progress, sepsis, or meconium. Consider possible underlying causes and undertake conservative measures as indicated. Obtain an urgent review by an obstetrician or a senior midwife. Consider fetal scalp stimulation or expediting birth. For pathological, which is one red or two amber features, obtain an urgent review by an obstetrician and a senior midwife. Exclude acute events, for example, caught prolapse, suspected placental abruption, or suspected uterine rupture that need immediate intervention. Perform a full risk assessment, including a full set of maternal observations, taking into account the whole clinical picture and document the findings. Consider possible underlying causes and undertake conservative measures as indicated. If it remains pathological after implementing conservative measures, Obtain a further urgent review by an obstetrician and a senior midwife. Evaluate the whole clinical picture and consider expediting birth. If there are evolving intrapartum risk factors for fetal compromise, have a very low threshold for expediting birth. In acute bradycardia or a single prolonged deceleration for 3 minutes or more, urgently seek obstetric review. If there has been an acute event, for example, caught prolapse, suspected placental abruption, or suspected uterine rupture, expedite the birth. Consider possible underlying causes and undertake conservative measures as indicated. Make preparations for an urgent birth, including a request for pediatric or neonatal support. Expedite the birth if the acute bradycardia persists for 9 minutes or less if there are significant antenatal or intrapartum risk factors for fetal compromise. If the fetal heart rate recovers at any time up to 9 minutes, reassess any decision to expedite the birth, but take into account other antenatal and intrapartum risk factors and discuss this with the woman. Let's review the EFM definitions. 
First, the fetal heart rate baseline is determined as the average fetal heart rate over a 10-minute window. Normal is between 110 and 160 beats per minute. Tachycardia is defined as greater than 160 beats per minute. Some causes include either fetal or maternal hyperthyroidism, anemia, acidosis, or fetal tachyarrhythmias. Bradycardia is defined as less than 110 beats per minute and can be a result of hyperthyroidism, fetal heart block, hypertension, or due to the use of epidural. Fetal hypoxia can lead to either tachycardia or bradycardia. Next, we look at the baseline variability. This is fluctuations present in the fetal heart rate amplitude, which are not accelerations or decelerations. The amplitude is measured from peak to trough in any one minute segment and are usually irregular in frequency. Persistent, absent, or minimal variability is a sign of fetal compromise. Absent variability shows no change in amplitude. Minimal variability is 0 to 5 beats per minute change in amplitude. Moderate variability is 6 to 25 beats per minute change in amplitude. And this is the normal baseline variability that should be observed in a fetus. Marked variability is greater than 25 beats per minute change in amplitude. Heart rate accelerations are an abrupt and intermittent increase in the fetal heart rate. The onset to the peak of the fetal heart rate occurs in 30 seconds or less. If the fetus is greater than 32 weeks in age, this increase in fetal heart rate must be at least 15 beats per minute higher for 15 seconds. If the fetus is less than 32 weeks in gestational age, the increase in fetal heart rate must be 10 beats per minute for 10 seconds. A prolonged acceleration is defined as an increase in the fetal heart rate that lasts for greater than 2 minutes but less than 10 minutes. If the acceleration lasts for greater than 10 minutes, then it is defined as a fetal heart rate baseline change. It is normal to have at least two accelerations every 20 minutes. Sinusoidal patterns are a sine wave-like pattern with a frequency cycle of 3 to 5 per minute for greater than 20 minutes and can be a sign of fetal compromise. Early deceleration is defined as repetitive and periodic slowing of the fetal heart rate with onset early in the contraction and return to baseline at the end of the contraction. These are uncommon. Variable deceleration is defined as intermittent and periodic slowing of the fetal heart rate with a variable time in relation to the contraction. Concerning characteristics include lasting more than 60 seconds, reduced variability within the deceleration, failure or slow return to baseline fetal heart rate, loss of previously present shouldering. Late deceleration is defined as repetitive and periodic slowing of the fetal heart rate with onset mid to end of the contraction and the lowest point more than 20 seconds after the peak of the contraction and ending after the contraction. Please review the following figures in order to visualize the difference between the early, variable, and late decelerations. Now, let's review the white, amber, and red EFM interpretations. Electronic fetal heart rate monitoring should be reviewed every 30 minutes in the first stage of labor and every 15 minutes in the second stage of labor. It is classified as white when there is less than 5 contractions in 10 minutes, the baseline fetal heart rate is within 110 to 160 beats per minute, there is a variability of 5 to 25 beats per minute, there are no decelerations or early decelerations, if there are variable decelerations that are not evolving to have concerning characteristics. The EFM is interpreted as amber when there are 5 or more contractions in 10 minutes leading to reduced resting time between contractions, or when contractions are hypertonous. 
there is an increase in baseline fetal heart rate of 20 beats per minute, or more, from the start of labour or since the last review an hour ago. Or, the baseline fetal heart rate is 100 to 109 beats per minute. Or, if you are unable to determine baseline. Variability is fewer than 5 beats per minute for between 30 and 50 minutes, or more than 25 beats per minute for up to 10 minutes. There are repetitive variable decelerations with any concerning characteristics for less than 30 minutes. Or, there are variable decelerations with any concerning characteristics for more than 30 minutes. Or, there are repetitive late decelerations for less than 30 minutes. The EFM is interpreted as red when baseline fetal heart rate is below 100 beats per minute or above 160 beats per minute. Variability is fewer than 5 beats per minute for more than 50 minutes or more than 25 beats per minute for more than 10 minutes or sinusoidal. There are repetitive variable decelerations with any concerning characteristics for more than 30 minutes or there are repetitive late decelerations for more than 30 minutes or acute bradycardia is present or there is a single prolonged deceleration lasting 3 minutes or more. Medications can affect the electronic fetal heart rate monitoring. We will now discuss some common drugs used in pregnancy and how it affects EFM. Magnesium sulfate, which is used for preeclampsia and seizure prophylaxis, can lead to decreased variability. It inhibits increased accelerations with increasing gestational age. The decreased variability that is noticed may be a reflection of the gestational age and not the magnesium alone. Corticosteroids such as dexamethasone, which is used for fetal lung maturation, can lead to decreased variability and effects are seen after 29 weeks of gestational age. This effect returns to normal after day 4 to 7. Narcotics used as analgesia during labour can lead to decreased variability and decreased frequency of accelerations. Butophenol, which is also a form of analgesia, can lead to a transient sinusoidal pattern in 75% of patients. However, the sinusoidal pattern in this contact was not associated with adverse fetal outcomes. Butophenol can also increase the baseline fetal heart rate. Terbutaline, which is a tocolytic used to suppress premature labour, can lead to an increased fetal heart rate and the rate of tachycardia. Next, let's cover the resuscitation for suspicious or pathological tracings. Start one or more of the following conservative measures based on an assessment of the most likely causes. Maternal position, as this can affect uterine blood flow and cord compression. Encourage the woman to mobilize or adopt an alternative position, and to avoid being supine. Do not offer intravenous fluids to treat fetal heart rate abnormalities unless the woman is hypotensive or has signs of sepsis. If the woman is hypotensive secondary to an epidural top-up, start intravenous fluids, move her to a left lateral position, and call an anesthetist to review. For excessive contraction frequency, Reduce contraction frequency by reducing or stopping oxytocin if it is being used. Offer a tocolytic drug. A suggested regimen is subcutaneous terbutaline 0.25 mg. Do not offer maternal facial oxygen therapy as part of conservative measures because it may harm the baby. However, it can be used if it is given for maternal issues such as hypoxia or as a part of pre-oxygenation before a potential anesthetic. Do not offer amnioinfusion for intrauterine fetal resuscitation. Next, I'd like to review the clinical applications of electronic fetal heart rate monitoring. Moderate variability is associated with a pH of greater than 7.15. 
the presence of accelerations reflects no fetal acidemia. Electronic fetal monitoring increased the cesarean delivery rate, and the indication for cesarean deliveries was for abnormal fetal heart rate tracings and concern for acidemia. The risk of forceps or vacuum operative delivery was also increased. Electronic fetal monitoring decreased the risk of neonatal seizures. However, it did not reduce the rate of perinatal mortality or cerebral palsy. The false positive rate for predicting cerebral palsy is 99%. Of note, 60% of women in preterm labor will have non-reassuring fetal heart rate patterns. The ideal method to assess fetal status has not been determined, but the application of accepted fetal heart rate interpretation standards allows the opportunity for timely intervention and hopefully to optimize fetal outcomes. Quiz time. Question 1. Which is not a form of resuscitation for Category 2 or 3 tracings? Question 2. What would not result in fetal tachycardia? 